We're still on the Fed. We're on Operation Tox. We're still on Operation Tox Egg Heirloom Project. We're on part two. 40% of that heirloom project money, $147,625,750 annually, is going to go to getting the ETC programs out there nationwide. This is for homeowners. This is specifically for um, single-family homeowners. What, and <laughs> the reason why I say there's going to be a complement program for renters, but at any rate, the idea is to get the ETC out there, heading out to the hardware stores, setting up training centers nationwide. We're going to teach people how to be environmentally friendly. And if every nation on Earth starts to do this, then we have all these environmentally friendly classes going on. So the first part is full scholarships, including the kids in Job Corps. Those people, those kids that are participating in ETC programs, helping rebuild and whatnot, they should be getting college credits for it. But then again, the ETC is going to have books and other things that are little expenses and whatnot to help assure that these kids get their full scholarships for the programs. So we're giving them 20% of that 40% or $29,524,950. Now, the ETC is also going to need some equipment, some land, because the outdoors, the outdoors is the classroom. Everywhere is a classroom. So here's another 20% ETC, $29,524,950 so that they can get all the equipment they need and whatnot together. But then they're going to need some buildings on that land. The ETC is very environmentally friendly. They wouldn't build a building unless they needed it. I'm sure they'll find options. $29,524,950, that another 20%. Now, these bottom two, I actually had, or bottom three possibly, I had misprinted in tap that I sent to GW there, President GW. But we've already corrected that here on the screen. So, held by the POP, and this is in case of um, natural disasters, emergencies, the POP has a reserve held back for the ETC of $29,524,950. For avoidance of the doubt, the POP always holds the money until it's needed. So, you know, they're never interest-bearing loans. They are not interest-bearing loans. These are interest-bearing accounts. The POP holds the money. It's just the way it goes. It's the POP's money that's coming in. So when the money's needed, boom, it goes on out. ETC discretionary spending. They're going to have costs beyond these costs. I don't know what the ETC needs. None of us do. But when they do go out and start doing their little tours and having their little store shows and things like that, we'll all get to know. And we'll hit on that in a moment here. Um, basically, they have $29,524,950 in the bucket here to hold on to for discretionary spending. I was wrong a moment ago. I was wrong. These are the ones for the homeowners. The other ones are just in general, getting everything up and running. So for the homeowners, 10% of that budget, 10% of that $369,061,875, which is 98% of the heirloom project budget. Remember the other part went to admin. And that is 10% of the operation tax budget, which is 20% of the federal government budget, which is 15% of the LIPS revenue. So now let's get back down here. Homeowners. We're going to give 10%. $36,906,187.50. What's going on here is, once again, nationwide. We're heading out. We're, we want the ETC to hit up, um, like, the Home Depots, the Lowell's, things of that sort. What's going to go on is, is that there's going to be some closed bidding. And that comes actually down here toward, more towards the American Tour. But basically, there's going to be some closed bidding between the hardware entities, the big ones out there. And then once a year, the ETC is going to tour everywhere and give special shows. You know, and look, if you go down this aisle, you can get this drip sprinkler head over here. You can get that over here. And we want to thank Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware or anybody else out there for the opportunity for us to stop by and train you, Joe Public, the single-family homeowner. So they're getting $36 million for that. 10% should go right out. Now dig this. Of this $36 million for the homeowners, one, 10%, $3,690,618.35, $3 shall go for free seed, free heirloom seed. You're going to put it out there to them. People, you want some free heirloom seed, like the Audubon Society and their free trees. We want to start getting free heirloom seed planted as soon as possible. 
American tourists, we were just talking about, 40%, 14,762,475, will go to hit that American tour. Another 14%, or 40%, $14,762,475, will go directly to advertising, TV, radio, you name it, whatever the ETC chooses to tell people to get out to that place, to see us here, to see us there kind of thing. Learn how to make your homes into ETCs, Eco Village Training Centers unto themselves. Every home should be a training center for the kids. You know, so as the little ones grow up, they're learning about ecosystems, you know, which they do anyways. But now we're showing them how to make energy out of it, how to conserve, you know. So at the bottom end is the, the conservation, the, the discretionary spending. At discretionary spending level, the ETC clocks in another $3,690,618.75 on that. And I know we're about to get to renters next. Okay, now we're on to the American Renters. You basically know the foreground already. Let's just fly through this. You're looking at American Renters taking 10% of that 98% budget. Um, it comes to 36906187 Free postage and handling. Getting the seeds out to the American Renters of the world. $3,690,618.75 or 10% of that $36 million budget. Touring, once again. We talked about this before. American Tours and actually setting up shops in American towns and whatnot for the eco-village centers themselves and accepting closed bids to help offset the cost of touring. Nevertheless, $3,690,618.75 or 10% of that budget will go to help augment those American tours. You're basically missing the homeowners in with the renters kind of thing most likely. Nevertheless, there's some additional money to help keep things a little bit separate for whatever means you might have. Federal Housing Projects, $29,524,950. 80% of that 10% is going to the Federal Housing Authorities. We're going to call them participants, resident recipients. Here's what's going to happen. We're, we're talking about the housing projects that are subsidized at a federal level that are not privately owned. I don't care if it's a nonprofit. If it's, if it's a nonprofit privately owned, it's a nonprofit privately owned. It has to be owned by the Federal Housing Authority in full. Or it has to be a military base, something like that. Once again, a government installation. Literally, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, Powell's residents are going to make $10 per hour. They're going to, um, that's for 520 hours in any six-month period of time. So they're working part-time, 20 hours a week. The resident Powell's manager will make $12.50 an hour and must commit to 1,040 hours a week during the time. Now, they can re-enlist after they've graduated the program if they have less than 20800 saved up and they decide they don't want to re-enlist, well then 50% will go to them and 50% will go to someone, I don't care who, whoever they decide to give that money to. So the Powell's resident manager could be some old timer. He could be OG. He could be the, the gang, banger, uh, gang bangers of that hood. The boss of bosses. And the boss of bosses is saying, yo, you got to go put them heirloom seeds out there in front of my mama's place. You know what I'm saying to you? And he's keeping that place nice. He's kept it nice. He's earning his money. He's keeping it organized. Got some pals out in there doing some part-time labor for him and whatnot. But he hasn't earned enough money yet. So OG might not have anybody. Just wants to give that money to some kid. Can do it. That's if they choose to go that route. Now another route they can choose is, um, once again, at the end of their first contract, they can re-enlist or they can do this. Um, they can take a lump sum payout which within 30 days, no scholarship there, no nada, 30 days you got to be out of the hood. you got to move out of the projects. Or if they're over 20800 because they don't see a dime of this. They don't see it until the day they graduate. These are contracts. If they don't complete that contract, they don't get paid. But once that contract's completed, if they have over 20800 stashed up, they've been doing it a couple of years, they can ask one last time for six more months because this is a full-time kind of position, 1,040 every six months. So six months, they can ask one last time and say, look, you know, you're the program administrator, ETC. Here's the deal. I got this much money stashed up. If I work for six more months, I'll have a little bit more, and I can get a down payment on a house. So we know that no matter what, at the end of that six months, they're gone. Either way, they're gone. 